Hello everybody, good afternoon. This is just a very quick um, implementation that we did within the assignment. Um, it was us together with our partners from uh, Wanda West Southern Africa. It was a very, very small um, um, project that started as a POC and then later it became you know, a very big project and I think it was one of the first uh, um, EMI implementations in Africa. So we decided, you know what, maybe we need to kind of showcase this to the rest of the world as well. Um, just as a quick introduction, the SA Mint is basically one of the leading mints in the world and uh, we are based in South Africa. We're just over 120 years old. We are obviously owned by the South African Reserve Bank, which is our central bank. And uh, mainly our three lines of business is the circulation coins, where we do the entire South African coinage. And then we do coins for uh, the other parts of the world as well, especially in Asia, in Africa, in Europe, as well as in South America, surprisingly so. North America, we've never really done <laughs> any coins for this part of the world. <laughs> Then um, the second line of business uh, for our business is basically what we call our numismatics. This is now our collector's coins as well as the investor's coins. This is where we do, you know, the Kruger Rands. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of them. Uh, the Kruger Rands as well as um, some of the natural products. They're quite popular in this part of the world as well. The, the third and the final one is the bullions. Um, this is where we basically also more or less do, but it's mainly the investor coins um, that we do here. Uh, we're having a joint venture with another company in South Africa that's called Red Refinery. They sell it, and on our side, we basically produce it as the, as the manufacturing plant. Well, this, this project started really when we just completed implementing uh, what we called uh, the model-driven MES. We were just busy, you know, talking to our board and uh, busy bragging about how, you know, uh, successful that implementation was uh, because we're trying to replatform all our factory systems onto the new models. Uh, so onto the new model-driven MES. And uh, we had just finalized and completed that in, in, in one part of our plant. And then our MD just came to us and said, guys, what about me? You're saying you've got all of these uh, uh, systems now replatformed to the factory, but what about me? How do I see that you guys um, um, have done a very good job there? That's when we realized that there was no management information. We didn't have any you know, clear, concise, and consistent information coming out for uh, decision making. There was no insights into the way the factory was operating. And also, I mean, I thought, this is um, me now talking to you know, the executive at the um, um, a factory saying, you know what, your factory is running blind because you don't know what's happening in your factory. Um, there were no KPIs. I mean, most of these metrics like the OEE and all of those were not there. And therefore, um, um, just the factory was basically running on spreadsheet and running manually. Planning was done on the, on the spreadsheets. And then we decided, you know what, we need to do something and do something quite forced. This is just our factory at a, at a high level. I don't know if you guys, okay, I can see from this one, so let's just see if the laser is working. Okay, so the laser is not working properly. Um, this is basically the plant at a high level. We've got three sections in our plant. We call the first one the processing area, the other one is the plating area, and then the final one is the final products. Um, the project was basically focusing on the two areas where we had just implemented the model-driven MES, which was the, pro uh, the processing and the plating areas. And uh, we had to do these dashboards that you guys can see at the bottom here. Um, the project was just at a very high level. Um, 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 the it, it, we started as a POC, as I said at the beginning. and. The, uh, after that, we're doing just the part of the lab just to demonstrate that we can actually do something and mine the data from the lab because that's where most of you know, the value was at that stage. And then we did um, some detailed business analysis as well as uh, uh, then we did the source to target mappings just to map the data. And then after that, we did the actual development, which is you know, your ETL development as well as the um, dashboard development. And then obviously, um, as part of any project, then you would obviously do testing and then you, you implement. This was started in April of 2014 and then uh, we completed it around April again in 2015, which was um, last year. The solution was just an easy, an easy design because at that stage we didn't have anything um, that was uh, running the operational data. This is now from our factory. 
we, we just had you know, other you know, business intelligence tools from SAP, but they were not focusing really on the operational data. They were mainly focusing on the financial data. So what we needed to do was to quickly build an ODS um, um, for the operational data, and then after that, we basically consolidate all the data that's coming out of our historian, um, um, the MES database, um, the, uh, the spreadsheets, um, the planning database, and everything that uh, um, was, was the, we put it into um, an ODS, and then after that, we basically started building these dashboards now. And uh, um, that was really not that much of a very big, big issue because the ODS on itself is basically operational data and you can easily mine it and uh, um, get near real time um, information. Um, this solution again, it's similar to what I just explained on to the other side, but because we had partnered with, uh, with Wanda, we're, we're just segregating the duties here, who's gonna do what, because at that stage EMI was fairly new and not matured within, within the country, and therefore we needed the team from Wonderware to assist us with the implementation. This is again uh, some of the data. You guys might not see everything there, but uh, the data that's there, you would see that it's coming from the MES databases, it's coming from uh, material handling databases, it's also coming from the spreadsheets, it's coming from um, other various sources, even including our old factory systems that are still being used in the final products area. All of that was basically consolidated into one ODS, which is an operational data store. And then after that, we basically started to mine the data and then present the management information that we needed to, to present. All of this, of course, is driven by um, what uh, Janice has already spoken about, you know, uh, the nexus of forces, uh, which is digital around big data, um, um, the Internet of Things, uh, cloud, but uh, mainly here we're talking about just big data because we wanted to just consolidate all of this structured and unstructured data into one um, 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 ODS, which we can easily then, um, you know, report from. I always t tend to put up this slide all the time, I don't know why, but it's because I like it. <laughs> um, we just normally, just to show where the intelligence server and the dashboard server was sitting within our you know, network, as well as where the data store was sitting. And also, just to show you guys um, um, that we actually, we're starting to really rip the rewards around mobility, because you'll see that now we're using all our you know, mob um, mobile devices and we're basically um, you know, um, viewing all the dashboards from there without really any, any problems. Even if somebody is sitting somewhere in any part of Africa, they can easily log on to um, um, the dashboards and then easily check what's going on there and then they can make the decisions. The benefits really were quite, quite big, but the one that really, really surprised us was on the historian side. Um, as you would know, historian is more to do with the integration of the data. And uh, um, I was so excited about this because uh, we, we didn't have really something that uh, was you know, integrating this data so nicely before. We used you know, other ETL tools like your SSIS as well as data integrator. But with historian, it became so easy and uh, um, 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 easy for us and we easily just you know, um, integrated the two um, 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 data sources. But also the other thing was just on the scrap side, um, you know, we, we, we just didn't see where the problem was with our scrap and uh, our scrap numbers were very high. And with this, we managed to see um, 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 where the problems were. And I think on the next slide, you'll actually see where, um, or where our numbers are now sitting when it comes to scrap, simply because now we started to see um, that the problem is sitting at this part of the plant and therefore we needed to you know, focus more attention there in order for us to, to fix that. Uh, mobility, I've already spoken about that. We're using um, just the app to blue and then we're basically viewing it from anywhere in the world and uh, you can easily see what's going on into the plant. Um, big data, I spoke about it, the integration of the structured and unstructured data. OEE was also a very big problem. We started with uh, um, um, calculating downtime and then we realized, no, 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 we didn't need to calculate downtime for availability, but rather we needed uptime. And then we had to change the way we're doing the calculations there. And then after that, we, we actually just, I mean, as part of uh, the other you know, factors of uh, OEE quality and uh, the actual performance, then it was easier for us to just you know, get OEE figures without, without any problem. Um, this is the scrap numbers I was talking to you guys about earlier. Um, you'd see that um, about a year or so ago, this is where we're sitting with the, th these are coins, by the way, these, uh, these, uh, these numbers. This is the scrap of the actual coins. 
and uh, um, last year, or right now, this is where we're sitting. And uh, it's, it's really one thing that uh, we can easily, easily see that it was really a big benefit to our business. That now our scrap is so down uh, to such an extent that now we're no longer even tracking this as a, as, a, as, a, as a measure of our performance because now we can see that we've demonstrated the performance in there. I've spoken about mobility. This is basically, again, what I was just talking to you guys about. You can easily see and pick up everything uh, from your mobile devices wherever you are in the world and uh, uh, without, without any problems. Of course, it depends on the bandwidth where you are because in Africa, we're still battling <laughs> with the bandwidth. This is, again, I mean, what I just spoke to you guys about. Mobility is on the browser and uh, um, you can also use your, des uh, your desktops as well. Just some of the lessons that we've learned as a, as a concluding slide for me before the, the, the demonstration is that um, at the beginning, we, we really didn't have anybody driving this from the business side. And it was more of a, another IT project that was sitting there. And uh, you know, we had to convince our business that, you know what, this is not an IT project, it's a business project. And therefore, you guys need to be actively involved in the project. So that one to us was very critical because once you have business ownership and buy-in, it becomes easier because it's a need that is being uh, driven from the business side. Second one is obviously around the actual data sources. Where is this data sitting? There's just loads and loads of data sources, but which data are you specifically looking for and where does it reside? And also, um, I always say in one of the principles of data, I said you shouldn't really duplicate the data, but instead you must replicate it. So if you know where it is and you can easily integrate it without duplicating the data, that's good. But uh, don't um, 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 duplicate it, but try and replicate it. Um, in our plant, at the beginning, we didn't involve everybody in the plant. And uh, when we now started to say, okay, guys, there's your dashboard sitting there, they started asking questions and we realized that, okay, we should have um, actually involved them very early enough. Then some of the things that are there is just around the clarity between the MES reports and the dashboards, because most of um, um, these dashboards are actually reports that are sitting in our MES database or in our MES system. And some of the guys were saying, you know what? Should I use EMI or should I use the MES reports and uh, which one is which, which one is going to be early and all of those things. Once you manage to clear that, uh, that fine line, it becomes so easy for you to, to, to deal with the guys. The rest of the stuff there is around just uh, manual data sources as well. How do you ensure that that manual data source remains manual and there's no, you know, uh, somebody was changing it. When you try and see um, the single view of the business at the end, it's basically a reflection of what really happened the previous day or the previous hour or the previous minute. So um, um, it's one of the things as well that uh, um, um, you have to guard against. But data quality, I always say, is the engine. Whatever goes through your system will obviously come out on the other side. So if the quality of the data is very good, um, I can assure you that the quality of your uh, dashboards and obviously decision making and insights and wisdom after that will also be, be um, um, informed. That's basically it for me. But these are now just the dashboards as you guys um, or as I've been talking to you guys. You would see that we've got data that's coming out of our MES data. Um, or databases, and then we've got data which is unstructured, and then you would see that most of this data, some of it is coming from the lab, um, um, from our material handling system, and then some of uh, the data is coming from the production scheduling, and then uh, you would see that some of these dashboards are basically consolidated into uh, one, um, like for instance, the scrap um, dashboard, um, which we go into detail into because this is where we really, really um, derived some value in the last um, um, few months or so. And in here you can take it through uh, monthly, you can go through each and every one of the areas in the factory, and you can pick uh, whichever area in the factory where you wanna see what uh, scrap numbers are there, and then from there you can also make some other choices like uh, which period you want to see this. And also you can just easily check um, and see the numbers um, and also how bad the production was um, um, I mean that specific part of the plant, and then you can easily just go through all of the you know the dashboards that are there and uh, and get to see the data. This data is mainly I think about two hours behind, um, so which is quite good for us because at times we're not really looking for the real time, but we're looking for near real time um, um, data. Uh, these are all the um, um, specific areas, which is in our plating area, where we do all the plating of our coins. And you can also have your own options there. You can choose the number of months, the number of uh, weeks, or 
even number of years or quarters or whatever you wanna um, um, serve the, um, the dashboard with. <coughs> can see processing, how processing is working. You can also see just how bad the production was in that part of the world. You can go back again to your dashboards again, and then you can go to the defects as well, which is, um, I'm not very far from uh, your scrap dashboards. And then in here you can check um, all the parameters, especially around you know thickness, um, your, your bed production, the scratches on your coins. All of these are things that uh, they can easily pick up now and they can even choose which area that they want to focus on. Since, I mean, you're not even going with machines, you're going with wax cells here, which is quite good as well, and then you can check the denominations. At the bottom, these are all the denominations that we're doing. You'll see a Swaziland, you'll see a Zambia, a Zimbabwe, um, a Thailand. These are all the coins that we basically are, are producing in our circulation coins. So you can check which month, which period, the quantity, was it good? So this is basically All the dashboards that we have, the, um, we've done the defects, we've done the scrap dashboards. I think we'll go through now just the production one, just to see the uh, production versus uh, actual, or the plan, sorry, versus actual. And then you can choose the days, you can choose the months, you can see if you've done. This is basically just at a high level everything that the team can do now which before they couldn't do or they were unable to do or see about their own factory which is really really something that has helped them to make some good decisions these are all the areas in our processing plant And then if you want to just drill down on the data, you can also do that and see which specific work cell in that uh, work area that uh, um, produced that, uh, that number that you're seeing there. If you don't like it, you go back and check exactly what really happened. So this is basically the availability that um, helps to you know, get onto your OEE figures uh, with quality and, of course, performance on the other side. But at uh, the beginning, we started with uh, um, up times, sorry, down times, and then we had to change and then say, you know what, let us do the up times because we thought it would be more accurate for us to calculate our OEE if we uh, change from down time onto the up time. So you can see which machines. Uh, this is mainly our processing part of the, of the factory. And yeah, can, yeah, I can also um, um, see when did they stop the machines and why, what were the reasons for that downtime? Were they, you know, going on lunch or what were the operators busy with at that stage? So you can easily also pick up, but also in all the areas of the factory, or especially um, plating and the processing area. Um, spoke about big data, which is basically just, uh, you know, the consolidation of your unstructured data and structured data into one and then be able to actually get um, um, the real view of how your business is performing. So that should literally be it, I think. So in closing, just from my side, just to say it was one of those projects that uh, we had to partner with our partners from Wanda West Southern Africa, and they were really, really good, and they assisted us because we didn't have anything um, to see how our, our factory was operating, and uh, yeah, we had to, to do something like this. Thank you very much.